In this video, I'm going to introduce Lightroom's library module, which lets you do two main things. First, you can sort through your photos to find which ones you like and don't like. And second, this is also where you're gonna organize your photos so that you can actually find them later. Now, we're gonna start by looking at this left-hand tab and specifically the navigator. Here, you can see a thumbnail of your picture and then also a few options to magnify the photo. Now, this is the only zoom component of Lightroom. It's gonna be at fit by default. But if you want to magnify the pixels in the image, you can click on one to one or two to one. And if you wanna go even further, you can go all the way up to 11 to one. Now this really shows the pixels of your image, but most of the time you won't actually need to use this navigator tool because you can just zoom in and zoom out by clicking the letter Z on your keyboard or just by clicking the photo once and then clicking it again. Instead, this toolbar is used more as a way to change how far you've zoomed in. If you wanna work with a higher magnification than one to one, this is where you're gonna to have to click it. There's no other way to get there. Next up on the left-hand tab are three of the big ways to organize your photos, catalog, folders, and collections. We're gonna start with catalog. This one's useful because you can click on all photographs and you're going to see every picture that you've loaded into your Lightroom catalog. So you can see it's not just pictures that I took on one particular date or another. All synced photographs shows every photo that you've synced with Adobe's cloud, including with Lightroom mobile. A quick collection is just a very useful way to immediately group together a bunch of your photos. It doesn't really mean anything, it's just a junk drawer that you can put your photos into. Now just now I clicked and dragged those photos and you can see they show up in my quick collection. But in fact, all you really need to do is click on a photo and then click the letter B on your keyboard and it adds that to the quick collection. You can see that photo pops up here. And the exact same thing is true if you want to remove a photo from your quick collection, you just highlight it and click B on your keyboard. You can also highlight all the photos by doing Control A or Command A and then clicking B so that your quick collection is empty. And then the final option at the bottom is previous import. Now previous import only shows the photos that you've most recently added to Lightroom's catalog. And in my case, that's just these macro photos that I recently imported. Now a few more options can pop up under this catalog tab from time to time. Uh, for example, if you export some of your photos as a new catalog, you'll see an additional section here that says previous export as catalog. And that's not the only one that can pop up, but all the new ones are gonna be pretty self-explanatory. Now onto folders. As I mentioned in my video on catalogs, this folders section perfectly mimics the folder structure on your hard drive, at least for the photos that you've already imported into Lightroom. Now, one thing that I do wanna demonstrate is that if you right click on any folder, then you can go to show parent folder, and then that pops up in Lightroom as well. In this case, it's my 2020 folder. You can see that 2020 has both 03 March and 04 April. And for what it's worth, this folders section is actually not where I recommend organizing most of your photos in Lightroom. And that's because you can't have one photo in multiple folders. So if you want one picture to be in both your best photos album and in your selfies album, because I guess it's an amazing selfie, you can't do that here. Uh, that's why I just organize my photos by month and also by year. And I leave my actual organization to this next section down, collections. And these are albums that only show up in Lightroom. So for example, if I want to have a collection called Macro, I can create that collection very easily. I click Create and it pops up there. Now it automatically adds the photo that I've just highlighted, but if I want to add more pictures, I can go into this 04 April folder where I know that all of my macro photos are, and I can click Control A or Command A to highlight all of them, and then drag them into that macro collection. And now you can see all of those pictures appear under Macro, and that's a very useful way to organize these pictures because I could have another collection that I just call Best Macro. I click Create, and then I can go through specifically to add which photos I think are the best macro photos. I can click and drag those into Best Macro, and then I'll have those in both collections simultaneously. And Lightroom also lets you make smart collections automatically by taking all the photos, for example, that have a five-star rating or all the photos that you've added in the past month. There's no real limit to how you can organize your photos in collections, and you can also create sets of collections to make the organization even easier. I can do that by just going down to Create Collection Set. For example, I can create one that's called Photography Life Workshops, and I click Create. Now that shows up as a collection set. You can't actually add photos to the collection set itself. You've gotta create a collection within it. So I create a collection, maybe I'll call it 2020 Jordan. I click Create, and that now shows up within it. Now I can just go to my photos in 03 March. I took all of these on that workshop. So I'm gonna click and drag into my 2020 Jordan collection. And then for future workshops, I can add them to this PL workshop section as well. And they're all gonna be grouped together in a way that's very easy to find. 
Now, collections are such a good way to organize your photos that I'm going to make a full video on the topic. For now, though, I'm done with this left-hand sidebar. Uh, the Publishes Services option at the bottom, it can be useful if you want a quicker way to output your photos directly from Lightroom to Flickr or Adobe Stock, but it's not something that most photographers are going to use. Now this top section here, this Library Filter option, this is extremely useful. If there's any photo that you're trying to find, if you don't know where it is, this is how you're going to be able to sort through all of your pictures to find that particular photo. Uh, the first one is just called Text. And right here you can type whatever you want, whether it's a file name, keywords, anything, and it'll search for that. But I do want to emphasize that it'll only search within the folder or collection that you've already clicked. So if you want to be searching within all of your photos, I recommend going up to Catalog, All Photographs, just to make that easier on yourself. And the same is going to be true if you've clicked on Attribute instead. Now Attribute can sort by things like five star ratings or color labels. Uh, so if I give these photos, for example, uh, three star, four star, and a five star rating, then I can search by anything four stars or greater, or I can search by four stars or less. And this also shows up all of my photos that currently have zero stars because I haven't rated them. So if you know that you've given your photo, for example, a four star rating, you can also just go rating is equal to, and then that photo is gonna be the only one that pops up. But I'm gonna close out of that for now. And the next option over is metadata, and this is the most granular way to search through your photos. Right now it's got a few different categories, lens, focal length, aperture, and ISO speed. However, if you click any of these, you can see that there's actually many more options at your disposal. Now this library filter searches from left to right. So if I start in the lens category and I just select this one wide angle lens, you can see my focal length options will cut down. Right now it says that there's only four focal lengths available. If I have all lenses, it actually jumps up to nine focal lengths that I can choose from. So if I know what lens I use to take a certain photo, it can definitely make it much easier to find. Now the next options over can simplify things even more. Maybe I know that I took it at the widest angle. And then I know, for example, that I took it at f4. There's only one photo that that applies to, and that would be this picture. So as you can imagine, this is a very useful way to find photos that you're missing. But right now I'm not missing any photos, so I'm going to click none, and that closes out of the library filter tool. Now let's talk about the options on the right. I'm going to minimize them so you can see all of them simultaneously. Now we've got quick develop, keywording, keyword list, metadata, and comments. Now if I click on one particular photo, you can also see that I have a histogram at the very top. Now if you don't know what histograms are, check out our link below this video, but it's essentially a graph of how bright the pixels in your image are. You can see this is a pretty medium toned image because most of the tones are in the center of this graph. Now beyond that, the first option here says quick develop, and these are just very quick ways to edit your photos. Uh, for example, you can bump up the exposure, you can bump it back to normal, but I don't actually recommend using this quick develop section most of the time, just because Lightroom has a whole develop section that has much more extensive edits that you'd probably rather use. Now keywording and keyword list are there so that you can tag your photos with whatever keywords you want. I don't use this personally as one of my methods for organizing photos, but if you want to, you certainly can. Now this next option down is metadata, and metadata is simply information about your photo. It's pretty extensive and I find it very useful. Uh, you can see everything from your exposure compensation to your metering mode, really anything that you want to know about your photo. This is also a spot where you can apply a metadata preset if you didn't do that when you imported your photo. Now the last option down is comments, and these are not actually comments that you can leave on your own photos. Uh, if you do want to leave a comment on your photo, there's a section under metadata called user comment that you can do just that. Instead, this is only relevant if you've uploaded your photos directly from Lightroom to something like Flickr or Adobe Stock and someone else leaves a comment. Uh, so it's not going to be super relevant to most photographers. Now there's also a bottom tab that you can pop up if you want to see a really small thumbnail view of your photos. This is called the film strip and you can see it's potentially a useful way to both have a full screen view and a grid view of your photos at the same time. However, I don't actually use this on my laptop because it takes up too much space, so I minimize this by default. And these buttons at the bottom, those just cycle through a few different views of your photos. Uh, so if I click on that, you can see right now I'm in this grid view. I've been in this a few times already. Uh, you can also get to the grid view if you're in the full screen mode just by clicking the G key on your keyboard. Now I'm going to highlight four photos because that's going to be a useful demonstration in just a moment. But for now, let's go back down to this second option. This is just the full screen view. We were on it earlier. And if I switch between the photos using the arrow keys on my keyboard, you'll notice it only cycles through the four photos that I've highlighted. Right now I'm only clicking the right key on my keyboard over and over. So that's something useful if you know that you've got a couple photos you want to look through. 
Next one over is the compare view, and it pops up two of the photos side by side so you can compare them more easily. Now, if you zoom in on one photo, both actually zoom in, so this can be a useful way to tell which of your pictures is sharp if you've got two that look very similar. The next choice is called the survey view, and this shows all four photos that you've highlighted simultaneously. However, in this view, you can't actually zoom into the photos. If I just click zoom, it actually bumps me back over to the full screen view. So instead, this is more if you want to compare something like a thumbnail style view, but only with those four photos. And you can also hide the ones that you don't want by just clicking X. So if you're working with a fairly large monitor, this can be a decent way to see all of your photos at once. But if you're working on something like a laptop, you probably won't be using the survey view most of the time. Now the final option at the bottom is the people view, and this searches by the faces that Lightroom detects in your photos. Now if you're a portrait photographer, you might want to check this out, uh, but I'm going to leave it be just for now. I'm going to click that G key on my keyboard to go back to the grid view. And that sums it up for the library module. Now I might do some future videos on more specific topics in the library module, but I hope that you found this one useful, and I'll see you next time.